cool. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, 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 thank you for having me again. Uh, one of our most popular guests. Oh, yeah. Unsurprisingly, you haven't been oh, on it. Oh, real. <laughs> oh, real. It's about every time, every time I hear the word popular, I think of that scene in Bridesmaids. Uh, you haven't been on in six months. No, I have not. A little, little update, a little six month update, huh? It's crazy podcast time. It goes by so fast. I mean, you think you've had on a guest super recently, but it's actually been much longer than it has been. Yeah. Um, how was your workout today? It was great. Yeah. You know, I honestly, I work out for like, man, I feel like it, mentally it's nice. I feel like I'm just, I can go throughout the day. If I don't work out in the morning, I just have a really shitty day. Awesome. So I try to work out as like every morning if I can. Do you do everything your trainer says to do? Or sometimes are you I, like, I don't want to do oh, this. No, I pretty much do everything that he says. There's times where like my, uh, like, cause my elbow, I'm still doing my elbow from the accident. So there's times where I like physically cannot go anymore in my right arm. So we have to just like figure out an alternative because my arm is still do you have lift days is it a push day a pull day are we doing cardio um he, he it's kind of like a full body pretty much every day except for like when we start doing weightlifting then he'll have me work on like shoulders and back one day or legs one right. day or chest one day are you going into a public gym or a private gym? private gym are there other like influencers I, I, I who are have, working out no, there? No. You have the whole place to yourself. Well, he it, it's like a little studio. It's not like a whole gym. Oh. So he turned his apartment into a gym. Oh, so wow. the whole bottom floor is like a gym. You see in there, you don't see it on like Snapchat. I can't, I, didn't, I could tell that it's someone's like, oh yeah, no, it's apartment. someone's, it's someone's apartment. Oh. It's like a studio apartment in Hollywood. Damn, are the neighbors just like underneath? Just no, like no, here at the bottom floor. That's the yeah. move. So I, and I'm sure he got that for a reason, the bottom four. Is he in great shape? A great shape, yeah. That's good. Is he there when you're working out? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah oh, it's just you're... me and him. It's just me and him every day. Okay, so you yeah. don't like have to self-motivate. He's there telling you He's what to there. do. I, I have to have a trainer. I, if I don't have a trainer, I won't work out ever. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get 300 pounds and I just won't care. You wouldn't just go to David's house at 10 a.m. I start I can't, kicking stuff I can't up. work out by myself. I need someone telling me what to do. Accountability. Yeah. I'm like a lost puppy when it comes to like working. I just don't know. And uh, you know, I just don't care either. You know what I mean? I don't care to go to the gym and work out by myself. Do you ever yeah. get pissed off and you're just like, hey, how about I don't do that? Um, No, I just push. I, I really just try to push because it. Good for you. I'm sure it's annoying. Yeah, I'm sure he has to, like, he, he tells me about like other annoying clients, like clients <laughs> and he has, and he has to do. So I. I just want to not be that annoying client. And yeah. Like just like get the shit done because I, it's, he's working just as much as I'm like, have you ever had an out of shape trainer? <laughs> um, they, they might look out of shape, but they're very strong. Correct. I think I've had some in the past where like I've worked at like the big chains, like, Oh, LA fitness, 24 hour fitness. And I, there they kind of hire everybody to, I think as a way to create a community of getting healthy. Oh, but I had a trainer one time where I'm like, you don't have the body that I want. Like I need somebody who has like the dream physique that I yeah. am striving towards. I think, I think that's important too. And I think like, like Equinox, every trainer there like has a pretty good body. They look Sports Illustrated, I think right? it also kind of represents your like gym as a whole too. You, you want to have like people that are like in shape when it comes to like, trainers right? yeah yeah because if, if you if you go in and like there's out of shape trainers then you're not gonna like they're not gonna bring any business to you so yeah. it's not very motivating what it's not very motivating it's not very motivating except to say oh well if you work out this is what you'll look like, like and you're I like a horrible trainer imagine being a trainer out there. i think you'd be just fine i, I look no, great I mean, I, nobody would ever want me though because I am not in that physique shape that like, it's like, it's like a mannequin. You look at a mannequin and you see clothes on and you're like, damn, that looks good. You put it on you, it sucks. Uh, so you want something these are people could look at and be like, okay, I, I, I do want that. It's like, you know, he, when you look at the shelf and there's a good food, they want to make it look as tasty as possible. I, if yeah. it's in some blank ass shit and it doesn't look good, you're not you're never going to buy it. Presentation mm. is everything. Exactly. Let's talk about this necklace, Zane. You feel like you, you haven't taken this off. I, 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 you know what? It's because I don't have any necklaces. This is like the only one I've ever had or owned pretty much. So I just, I don't know. I just got to go gel and I just wear it. And it's, it kind of looks like a, it's a pill, but it looks like a, it looks like a podcast mic. Yeah. That's what I thought. It's a pill. It's a pill. Oh. They're, they're called, uh, my friend Emma Pills. She makes a uh, pill necklaces. <gasps> Cute. So, but it just looks like a podcast mic to me. More. It does look like a little bit of a so microphone. I, I, I kind of like it. What? What? But I'll, I'll get over. It, I feel like in like two weeks. Like I'll look and be like, oh, I'll just take it off. I'm just wearing it because it's like it's a. It's, it's new. Like, it's new. It's yeah. fun. It's exciting. It's exciting. You're a jewelry guy too. I'm not a jewelry guy. I've had just the just the one single gold chain. 
to remind me that I'm from New Jersey and there's a lot of Italians where I grew up. That's good. And uh, brings me back to my roots. You know what I've never like been on, but I see some guys rock are just rings. Oh, I, I wish I could do rings. I just don't have pretty hands and pretty <laughs> fingers to be rocking rings. Good thing. If you had a ring, people would be looking at your hands all the time. I do not want people looking at my hands ever. What don't you like about your heads? Just look at my nails. Oh boy. It's, it's gross. You bite your nails. I, I'm a v heavy, heavy nail biter. You bite your nails. I bite my nail to the core. Yeah. I can, I mean, I can see that you yeah, got a little it's, nuts. It's, it's really gross. Like I, every day I look at them and I'm like, I just, Zane, just buy the nail polish. Just do it. Like, it's going to suck. You can't like, when you're eating food, you can't like, like lick your finger. Like you <laughs> can have to watch yourself. Like you can't rub your eyes. Yeah. That's anything. what we, cause there's what, like a little bit of like spiciness like, on it. It's like, it's pretty much having hot pepper on your fingernails. All the time. I feel like it would taste kind of good though. It just makes it no, into your no, sound a little bit. I feel like we get in some ranch going on. <laughs> it does not taste good because not only does it taste like pepper, but it also tastes like nail polish. Ugh. So it's like a mixture of the two. Ooh. And and that's the main thing. I just hate that I can't like I, I can't do any like I don't want to I you can't touch your fist. Have you ever bit it down so close where it's like bled? He, Matt all the time but it bleeds all the time i knew a kid who like there's blood uh, there's always blood on my sheets on my clothes could you bite your nails? nails yeah have you ever tried to put like the bitter agent on there or something i've i've i have i it actually started working and and then i bit off and then i bite my nails again are you biting all throughout the day or do you have like a, a time of day where you like to bite um well there gets a i guess a point where like it'll hurt <laughs> And then I'm just like, my hands hurt. Like, I can't touch them. And then two days later, I get that l one little nail that's ready to be pulled off. And you get so excited. And I get so excited. Can I ask you this? Do you ever, do you ever like, finish with your hands and start looking at your toes? And you're like, okay. Um, I can no, start no, getting to your toes. I never like. But you clip your toenails? But I'll just like, I'll just start like. Picking them? <laughs> yeah, I think it's like something, something is sticking out of your body. Like, I just want to pick at it. Yeah. I pick my, I pick my boogers a lot. It, when something is, <laughs> when something is like poking out of my body, I like to just pick it. Scabs. Love All day. I mean, nail biting is like a very widespread phenomenon. You're not alone in this. You know yeah. what you should get? You know what you should get? You should get acrylics. Just get the most natural looking nail biting nails, I, but they're fake because then you can't bite it's them. It's going to look like I'm wearing fucking nails. Though. Like, it's going to look like I'm wearing, you could tell. They, they don't have like the thinnest type of it, acrylic, but I, then you'd be like, I want to get that yeah, off, rip it off. off. But I could, but it will like, you'll never find natural looking nails like that. I haven't seen it yet. Let, I'm going to buy you the, well, what's it called? The nail polish. The, with the, the spiciness like, yeah oh yeah just look up like nail biting uh, nail polish okay i'm, I'm gonna buy it for you and we're gonna put it on sure i i then he's gonna do it once he's gonna hate it and then he won't that's do the it. point i'm telling you why like i just i can't get but i tell myself every day i'm gonna do it like, what if, i'm gonna do it today i'm gonna do it next week do they make like hands that you can buy like a fake hand that has nails on it that you can just chew on throughout the day like there's got to be a replacement for this. I, and again, no, no, I mean, what's what's a better convenience than right here? <laughs> just wear gloves. <laughs> I tried gloves one day. I couldn't do. I, I, you can't use your phone. phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot, you know. But also, I'm just coming up with excuses. Too. You chew gum. What um, if you were chewing gum? Because then, I, like, I, I do chew gum, but like gum does not like satisfy the urge. Satisfy the. I don't really eat gum. I, I used I've to never be really... all about gum when I was I young, and I don't do it anymore. Yeah, I, I like mints. I don't know what it is about gum. I just I am not about it anymore. I do. I'm in full agreement. When you're like in high school, you gotta have gum on you. Yeah, always. always. High school, college, you gotta have. Now I like. Ugh. I, I don't like a mint. I don't like talking to people when I have gum. In yeah, I feel like yeah. I'm being rude, and it's just like little. Yeah, there's times where I'll just like dabble with it. You know, I'll just put it in my mouth and and then. Spit it out like five seconds later. Why can't you know like bubblicious gum when we were kids? Like the big, just chunky oh, cube. One of those. Why doesn't like the flavor last? Didn't uh like minty places make chunky gum like that? Chunky bubblicious gum. Yeah, that's but like mint white flavor minty. minty though. Yeah, but just mm -hmm. that chunk. Give me that chunk. Yeah, of gum and not this like tiny little one. You know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, the the thick. It's like biting into a marshmallow. Yeah, yeah. They I don't do that. that. Like the ice on one. It might be just too much. Yeah, even like strips, like Wrigley strips or whatever. That sometimes is a little bit too much. I have to like pull, cut them in yeah. half because then, but because oh the mint is so overwhelming. You used to be the person who would give people half a gum. Oh God, who are you? Get it real. There was a lot of people in my high school that were the half gummers. I'm like, gum is not that expensive. Like. Come on. I remember the first time my one of my dad's friends offered me two pieces of gum at once, and I was like, 
that's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, it's right yes, there. exactly. You're like, damn, bro. And, dude, and it's, Ubers all the time. They have full packs of gun. They give you a lot. And yeah. If Ubers can do it and Lyft can do it, then you can. And do if it's it. gun where it's being pushed out of like the little like aluminum thing, that's status right there. Like someone because you know, like if it's Orbit, you just see all of them. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't. It seems like it's pretty oh. easy to share. But when you are like reminded about each one, it's like pills. You're like, yeah, you take it. I, yeah. I'm giving they you each a true individual gift. slot, like that big pack, that big pack, man. They, that was smart that they did that. Oh yeah, that like giant fat pack that you open it up. Oh, it's, it's like, got a buy thing, a wallet. Man. Yeah, that one, dude. I see it everywhere. The buy fold wallet. Those. Yeah, I and every if I do have gum now, I always make it a point to offer two pieces of I, Tic Tacs, mints, whatever. You offer two pieces of gum? Always. That's, because that's a little... Because when that guy made such an impact on me because it used to be, yeah, people would rip it in half, they'd give you one, but they'd kind of wince and like, oh, I only have three pieces left. You give someone two pieces of gum, they'll remember that shirt for the rest of their lives. Why doesn't Altoid, like though, make a, like, a soundproof can? I think it's about Altoids when you walk around and it, everyone just hears the clink, 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 clink. It's like, damn. Boy, it's like you want to announce the whole world that you got Altoids and now you got to give a piece to every single person in the room. Like, come on. Yeah. We're, the, why, they should make a whole campaign about that. Like, shh. Uh, yes. I mean, they put that piece of paper and thinking it's going to work. What and it just. paper? It's like rolling paper. It's like you can like roll a joint like after it. But what's the need? Like, what is that? A patch of yogurt? Like, you, what's the fucking, what's that thing for? But it can't be that like environmentally friendly, but right? What is it? A PR package? Mm -mm. Like, just uh, get rid of it. You'll save so much money without having to print those fucking papers. A little foam liner. Just a little bit of foam yeah. all around on the inside. Shake it. Yeah, that's a commercial. That's a, whole, that's a whole thing, right? That's but a good idea. Altoid sours, though, they need to bring back. Do you remember those that were big in like the the night the two thousands? Altoid sours. It oh, was like, oh yes, yes. Oh, I thought those are icebreakers. Well, icebreakers like the liquid ice? No, no okay. icebreakers. Yes, oh. those are the best. Oh, I have my them in my car. I do. I'll get like stomach aches by the, because I'd eat so much. The flavor in those is unbelievable. Yeah, because it tastes like food. Yeah. It's it's not a mint. It's it, like this is a whole it's a meal. Vitamin. It's a vitamin. For sure. <laughs> I like. I, I'll pop it in like it was Alexa for. I was like, mm -mm. I'm good for the hour. Good for two hours. It was nice. Have you ever done the thing where you've gone into a dark room and you can like bite it and it like sparks? <laughs> Gum? Icebreakers. Icebreakers. There was like a the TikTok ones that you have. Yeah. If you go into a dark room and like if you bite it in a certain way, it like emits like a green spark. If you're that at it doesn't sound very healthy for you. I agree. <laughs> well, it's because there's I, I don't I don't think it's about the ingredients, but there's like static electricity in it. There shouldn't be static electricity in your gut and Dave icebreakers. Made a TikTok about this. He put Taylor in the in the movie theater room. It was pitch black. Taylor bit down on an Altoid and the thing like flashed green and then Hank Green stitched it and like explained what was happening. Oh. Because, thank you, Hank Green. Yeah, pretty sick. Wow, okay. You never tried it? No. Okay, we'll do it today. I thought, uh, I don't know if I've seen that video or not, but. And then we can do Bloody Mary after it. I will never do that. Oh, and icebreakers liquid ice. <laughs> Is it liquid? Is it ice? It's icebreakers liquid ice. Oh, you never did Bloody Mary as a kid? I would, I'm still too scared I, to I do it. I did it once, and I didn't complete it because I was like really scared. That yeah, I'm like, saying. I would do it now. How many times do you have to... I think it's silly to do it You now, would do it? Adult. No, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, me, I wouldn't do it. I just don't think it's... Why well, bring that energy? Yeah, it's, the horror stories I'm he I've heard with like Ouija boards is insane. Like people's actual stories, and like I believe them. Like I don't think people would make... Some people would, but like I... Yeah. Half the people would would not make shit up. I feel like they're really into spirits and shit. I really believe in that. I think if you really invite them and let them in and want them to cause chaos in your life, I think they will. I agree. You've never seen a psychic, right? Um, I've I've seen psychics. I've like had phone calls with psychics. Oh, how I thought about it. Did any of the stuff that they said come true? Not really. No. No. Okay. I'm just so surprised how they're able to like afford the damn real estate. Same. But have you ever noticed they're not actually in prime real estate? It's like a closet on a main street. If you ever look in to a place that says psychic, it, the wall is six inches from the front of the door. You're, you're, they took over like the janitor's closet of the subway next door. They're not paying that much in rent, but I have no clue how these people are in business. But, they, but they're charging. Uh, it's a lot of money to see a psychic. Is it? Yeah. Like like 200 bucks? It, it, it could cost between like 60 to 200 bucks. But you want to make, you want to be in like an area where there's like the wealthy kind of housewives who are on a bunch of claw, oh. uh, on a bunch of clonopin coming in. <laughs> yes. It's just oh, giving cash just to be told 
What they want to get, things are coming their way. I would drive out to Malibu every day as a sidekick just to be in that area because that's <laughs> <laughs> you're just <laughs> telling, yeah, telling rich women what they want to hear. Exactly. Ali, Ali, Ali was telling me there's a sidekick she saw that is in, out in Malibu, and she said that it was like the most insane experience she's ever. Your beachfront property is fine. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. Your you're kids love lanes, you. Your kids but... are going to come back. They're not going to continue to be terrible people. Your kids are going to be grow up to be great. Oh, they're just all those sidekicks just bring bring up real estate. And yeah. <laughs> Beach, right? Oh no, no, no! You, you're definitely in the hills. If I, I, if I had a beachfront property, I think I would need to see a psychic just to tell me that there is going to be no like incoming tide that is going to wipe away my oh, home. Yeah. Oh my Do god. You, I'll be right back. Got a quick word from today's sponsor, Talkspace. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and Talkspace, the leading virtual therapy provider, celebrates every effort you make to improve how you feel and how you live. Even a small step can make a big difference. And if you've been working on your mental health or if you want to make progress toward a mentally healthier place, Talkspace is here for you. And, you know, sometimes you can get down, life can get a little overwhelming, it can affect your life, and it's helpful to talk to a therapist. If you're not sure how to get started, Talkspace has made it easy to find a therapist that you'll like. It's convenient to meet online, at home, where you're most comfortable. Talkspace has made a huge difference in so many lives and can do the same for you. Do you think seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one or meet up with them or even afford one? Try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy. Talk and Talkspace also lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait for your next session. And therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end -end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. Talkspace is affordable and in network with most major insurers. So, to celebrate May, Mental Health Awareness Month, and to celebrate every step you take toward a better, richer, fuller life, Talkspace is offering every listener of this podcast, Hoot and a Half, $100 off your first month with Talkspace. Just go to Talkspace.com slash H. H. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash HH to get $100 off your first month and to show your support for the show. That is Talkspace.com slash HH. And now, back to the episode. Uh, do you see yourself as like a beach guy? Like if you, if you had the money, would you have it like right there on the beach or are you more into a view? <sighs> Even neither. Or you just want like a pretty just home and inside. I, I think a pretty home I think is much more important than having a view. Dude, I've seen the worst houses with a view and people will buy them um, just because of the view. I was like, that's crazy to me. Yes. Like, don't you want to buy a house for what like for what you're putting the money into having a view is not money like that's crazy i agree money is you're buying a house make sure that house is exactly what you're paying for i agree you know it, it's so silly to me like beach i guess i, I, I it makes sense because it's your backyard but you'd have to be on the fucking beach like if you're anywhere before that no not worth it like you're gonna be by the beach, you, you gotta be on the beach. And if you if you have a not if you have a view, you're also so far from civilization. Like you can't just like walk down the street to Walgreens if you're. It's 20 minutes yeah, to get anywhere. You can't invite people over and host a party. Yeah. And it's like, there's nowhere to park, especially when you're in those windy part of the hills. And there's no cell phone signal to get, get out of the hills. I went to a party recently, and they were, even on his Wi-Fi, you could not get an Uber or a Lyft up to his house. Well, for some reason, every celebrity and rich person wants to live up there. I'm like, that is insane. I would never, you couldn't pay me to live in the hills. <laughs> Dude, Heath and I were like, you know, back like four or five years ago, and we we're like, oh my god, we we should live in the hills. It's like yeah, that's where it's that's where it is. Yeah. And the, everywhere we we're looking, they were so expensive. It was the shittiest houses with no view and no parking. It's like oh, it's just because it's in the hills. Yeah. And they're selling to you as Jimmy Kimmel lives right down the street. It's like <laughs> who gives a shit? You're never gonna see him anyways. And the architecture in LA is all over the place. There are some of the most hideous houses out here that these people have built. Like us. It, some look cool, some look great, but it, there, there was no, like, cohesion to, like, what L.A. style art. I mean, you see, like, Mediterranean stuff. You see all, like, the really, truly like, expensive stuff, 
but some people just like drew the houses themselves and like yeah. built it the way they wanted to. But like, but house hunting out here is not fun at all. Like looking at houses to rent, to buy, not fun. It's not exciting, but go out anywhere else, Chicago, South Carolina, anywhere like that yeah. with, with the budget that's out here. You yeah. wouldn't even be able to pick a place because there'd be so much to choose from and you would like about 15, 20 houses mm. and you just couldn't even make it. Do you ever go on Zillow and just look like Wisconsin and you're just like, yes, yes all the oh time. Oh my God. It makes, it makes me hate being here. Like seeing all what you can get out anywhere else. Mike, is the housing market going to collapse? I, Thanks for asking, I, Matt. I've been told. Uh, well, I, I, it's a tough balance. No one really knows, but it should because everything is the dominoes are like, like i wanted to yeah and i, I, I everyone wants it to but the thing that's different about this time is that when it does collapse there's these like big investors like blackrock and other big banks that are ready to buy the houses in cash no matter what we're not competing with other people anymore you're competing, competing with like banks this, the system wants us all to rent for the rest of our lives. yes that's, that's fucked that's, uh, that's how it's all structured and it's not the american dream i know they that's how they sell it but why are why is every single bank and big for and if they're buying everything they yeah buy everything so we never own anything yeah so we're fucked. people buying houses that they cannot afford i mean yeah, yeah that's, that's what's happening that's what happened what in 2008 the, what was the movie we watched big the, short the, oh big short. Yeah. yeah like i i i, I can see that happening again it's very, happening very right now yeah uh, they're, but they're not giving out loans to people who can't afford them like they used to right no but they just came out with this new thing that is it makes absolutely no sense if you have a good credit score and you apply to get a mortgage, you now will pay more to cover people who have lower yes. credit scores for them to get a loan for their mortgage. That's becoming a thing. I just asked my financial advisor. He said it's it's being it's it's pushed. It's in through. fucking sane, dude. With good credit score. They're being punished. It doesn't make any sense. So meaning they get what a higher interest rate? Yeah. On so the like loan? so like if me, if you have a good credit score now and you go apply for a loan and let's say it's like six percent, it's going to be seven percent and. They'll say like, oh, well, it's only $40 a month for the next 30 years. And you're like, okay, for $40 a month, okay, I'm helping other people. But that's like $15,000 over the course of the loan because you have a good credit score. Yes, the whole thing is fun. Shit. Have you ever had a bad credit score? I have. Really? And I got out of it. Yeah, no, I was I was in a shithole for a good like five years of my life. What caused, wait, what, what time of your life? Is it, it back it, in the it, vine it, days? Just, just bills, just bills that I didn't know were uh, not being paid. Oh, shit. Like just very hidden stuff that I had no idea. Like if it doesn't, like if I'm not seeing it in front of my face, like now that we have our phones, we can tell. But like yeah. back then, if you were like not something, you're missing something in the mail or it wasn't getting to you. That like th yeah, they were they were was it on charging the poor here. level or was it like what's the levels of credit? I mean, score? My like, credit score there's... was down to like five thirty. Ooh, that's not good. Below six hundred is pretty bad. Like bad. Like I wasn't able to buy. I wasn't able to get a car. You can't rent anything. Yep. You can't do anything with a low credit score. Yeah. So do you remember what the bills were for? This is perfect opportunity yeah, for trail, honestly, a true bill. <laughs> it was or, honestly probably for one or two. Yeah. Two missed payments. That yeah. Was like missing payments were, but I wasn't seeing it. But I was paying for everything else. Yeah. All the time. I didn't realize about like credit. It wasn't until like actually five years ago. But when I had credit cards, I didn't realize you could just like auto pay it. I thought oh, you still had to yeah. manually go in and pay the credit card bill every yeah. time. And then when I realized it was auto pay. It took so much like stress off my mind. But, then, but I was like thinking I had to go in and like pay these increments or like mail it in. But then you, yeah. you set up auto pay on one t one time. You have to like switch credit cards and just forget. Yes, oh, that's happened to me so your many mind times. Is so used to auto pay, you're not thinking about having to take that. And credit card number and plug in yeah when your credit person. card expires they don't tell you hey your credit card they yeah. tell you three months later when you're when you go to turn on your tv and your power's off oh yeah you haven't paid your bill in three months i don't even tell you because that's more money for everybody else i always have such big fears like is there something i'm paying for that i don't know about like yeah. that you it's just a recurring payment but it's not you know you have all of your on, on your iphone all the subscriptions you're paying for but you're like but is there something else somewhere that is being pulling out money continuously dude, people are dealing with this every single day there's always these head like apps apps dude the amount of apps that people pay for that they have no idea that they're paying for oh is yeah probably, probably a billion dollars apple it makes just, it so hard to cancel subscriptions that you have you have to go into your settings then your like profile at the top and yeah. then click subscriptions and then view the subscriptions <laughs> cool it's like wild. you're like your new york times would you know how to cancel the new york times you can't I do it. I can. App. Yes, I can. In okay. the app. Oh, wait, on iPhone. Yes, yeah, subscriptions. You can't. Mm. Matt, I was a uh, house subscribed to. Uh, you remember Full Screen? 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. Remember the little app that they had where they had shows? Yo90. Yes. Okay. So I, one time I, I downloaded it and I had to pay monthly just so I can watch an episode that I was on, right? I was able to watch. I had to download. So I paid, I paid for the monthly and then all of a sudden, like seven months later, deleted. I, there was no way for me to uh, cancel my subscription, so it was charging me twelve bucks oh. every single month, and there was no way back then. There was no way to, to like no a subscription yeah. unless you either called your credit card company or you um or you called Fullstreet. But like they had, it was just gone. But they were still taking my money, which is insane. Oh. Like I don't understand how that's illegal. Yeah, so I have to delete an app but still take payments. Mm. Isn't that a giant fucking lawsuit? There's a lot of big scams in America. We gotta rise up. Fight back, rise, people. Rise, rise up. up. How much do you pay pay in iCloud subscription a month? I pay I pay a lot. <clears throat> I pay twelve bucks a month. I pay ten dollars for the two terabyte. Yeah. I think mine's twelve. I, I, I definitely I pay something. I just And I pay for Google, like Google Workspace. This yeah. subscriptions is what it, it's you, you have to you're you're cooked for the rest of your life. Imagine you just took away Gmail, <laughs> took away like your iPhone, AT and T, whatever. We're fucked. We're all fucked. He, he, I mean he talked about all the time how like it's totally possible for them to shut down the grid. It's just, it's so scary that like they get to, to shut, shut down, down the grid. Yeah, but they don't want to. They want the money. If they shut down the grid, they're not getting paid. So they're not going to shut down the grid. That's they're just going to make us keep paying more and more. Yeah. It just, it just kind of gets scary to think about. This is why I'm going to run for president. I'll get all the insider information I'll, and then. Yeah, you got my vote. Cool, 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 cool. What's your, what's going to be your policies? Your, what's your platform? Um, Let's see. Well, name, name a topic. I'll tell you my take on it. Um, are we running for LA? No, no, no I'm running for, for president, president of the United States. Um, which I think I could <laughs> get <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, how can we make homes more affordable for people to buy? Uh, there's, there's, I don't know the specific policies, but I'm sure there's a way to make a law that says if you, if you're a company that makes over a certain amount of money, you're not allowed to buy X amount of homes. Like there has to be a limit for how much a company can can own homes. I like that. There has to be also. I mean, the biggest thing I would do is there's discussions about this, but the military budget that we have is fucking insane. Matt, do you know how much we spend? Okay, look. Before you continue that, I want to add to that. We were just looking at goggles that like night vision goggles. Night vision goggles, right? Heath bought some. <laughs> Heath bought night vision goggles. I don't know. We I don't know how what which ones he got. But we were just looking at night vision goggles on Google. Yeah. They go between like twenty thousand to hundred and ten thousand dollars. And if we're looking at the military, they probably have the most expensive yeah, and they're buying hundreds of thousands of thousand ten thousand dollar for one gold. pair for one pair. Oh right? yeah, oh yeah. When I saw that number, immediately I was like, "Oh my god, the military!" But like, just imagine Let's, how much everything costs. We spend more. The U.S. military spends more than I think it's the next twenty nine countries spend on their military combined. So it's wow. the U.S. spends like X amount of trillion dollars a year, and then it's like Russia, China, Japan. uh France, England, like all of their military budgets combined is less than we spend on our military. That's insane. And teachers get paid dick. They don't get paid anything. So basically what I would do is they take the money. Dicks? No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. That would be my big platform policy is take yeah. the money. Like, and this is a quote I like a lot is, you know, what was, and people say, well, the teachers are working hard or whatever. And you know, teachers always have to buy their own supplies. Yeah. When was the last time you ever heard about a cop needing to go into their own budget to buy bullets? Yeah, I mean, you don't hear about that. No. no. Mike Sheffer for president. You for me. In elementary school, you would have to, yeah, bring teachers school supplies for the classroom. <laughs> yeah, bring yeah. tissue boxes. Yeah. No, we don't have enough tissues for all the kids' runny noses. You get to bring tissue boxes. Wild to me. I think we'd like stack the tissue boxes up on the cuppies and everything. <laughs> hey, but like, you need a couple pairs of night vision goggles for $100,000? Sure, go ahead. Wow, that yeah. is, that is crazy. So wait, but then does the military? What do they do with the stuff that's like oh outdated because they gotta buy new stuff? Do they just sell it like on Facebook Marketplace? No, they just they just leave it. They just leave it. It's just wasted. What? And there, there's like a there was a whole thing in like I think 2015 or something. They built like a bunch of planes that they were gonna use, and it cost like trillions of dollars for like 30 planes. And there was like a problem that they didn't realize, and the planes just never were able to fly, and the money just got spent, and that was our money. We're so fucked. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they're not able to take those parts and like... Why would they? They already got paid. 
That's what we got to get into. We got to get into military contracting, guys. That's, <laughs> that's what we got to do. Fuck this YouTube don't, shit. I've seen that movie, man. I've we got to start movie. manufacturing tanks and bullets and planes and selling it to the government. And that's how you make it. That movie was based on a true story. The war two guys were just. Oh, wait, they were selling weapons yeah. to the military yeah. or other people's militaries? I've never it seen was, it. I think it's. You know, Anna Diarmas is in that film and she didn't know English fully when she got the role. And so she was having to like feed lines or hear what like, like the line is saying English, them and just like say it right back to the camera. Wow. She like, I think like not lied, but over exaggerated how like lied on her resume going proficient in English and she did not know it. That's good for her though. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So you make it. She still, she still killed in that movie. So like, it, it, I think it was worth, uh, worth the lie. Mm -hmm. What are the languages do you speak? I used to speak. I used to speak fluently, uh, fluent Arabic, uh, Arabic fluently. You can't do it anymore. No, you get tap in a whole new audience. Eh? I know. I know. You, uh, it's it's in here though, right? So if I go take like Arabic classes, I think in about six months, I think I can I, I can get it all back. What if you were in? What if you're in a room with two people speaking Arabic and they're going back uh, and forth? You I could probably understand what they're saying about ten percent. Oh, you really lost it. Yeah. Huh. I keep like. I could pick out words, mm -hmm. but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly what they're talking about. Did you ever learn how to write in Arabic? Yeah. Can you still do it? I, I had to read the Quran. In, to, in Arabic? Yeah. That language is like, I, when I look at the writing, I'm just like, this just looks like uh, lines. I, I, we had to write like, just like sentences and do you think you could, you still read it or you don't remember how to read it either? I can read it. Damn. Yeah. Like, I can read it, but I, I can't understand it. In Arabic, don't they like kind of write backwards by the word? Uh, yeah. It's, well, it's, yeah. it's, uh, yes. it goes this way. Yeah. 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 Left, left to right. It's not backwards, Matt. Okay. Yeah, American not. is left to right. Okay. And Arabic and Hebrew are right but to left. I get it. It's backwards. I'm saying from the American perspective. Yes. Well, yeah. have we ever looked at unfiltered to see what our biggest non English speaking country is that listens to the podcast? So um, we ever did like hire somebody to <laughs> translate it. Yeah. That's interesting. I can look it up right now. I'm going to guess it's either India Philippines for non-speaking, non-English speaking countries. Yeah, India, no. India or the Philippines. No, dude. India loves the, the internet. Philippines, I, I I feel like or it would be an English speaking country like Canada or the UK. Those are my my guesses. All right. Let's wait, see who our human half audience is here. Ge geography, yeah. Let's see. And maybe we can do a little shout out to our, our people. Um wait a second. Okay. New Zealand English, yes. What's, what's Ireland the, English? What's the country right? Yes. The country right under U.S. is New Zealand. Germany. Ger oh, there you go. Yeah. Wow, Germany. Mm -hmm. Shout out to our listeners in Hamburg. Guten Tag. Uh, South Africa English. English. So you know, oh, India is second. There you go. So Mr. Beast, you know, he has all these now teams who are doing active translating in all their videos. They dub. How yeah. much do you have to like pay someone to truly sit down? It's, to... it's pretty expensive, but it's so worth it for them. I bet AI though, you could like just get these AI speakers. Just. So, um, I think for their videos, they no. I think they hire people to play different characters in their videos. Wow. Wait, he remakes the videos? Uh, no, no, he doesn't remake the dub videos. Them. Dubs over them. So I think he hire like he has the same character that has the same character. Yeah, that's how they do, do you know it for who like. Does, I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. Do you know who does the voice of Mr. Beast in Japan? No. It's the person who does the voice of Naruto. Like he hired like the guy, the girl. I think it's a girl who does it. And obviously, he's gonna do that because that's just going to yeah, that's viral in itself. Like yeah. that's a conversation piece. That's so smart. Yeah, that, that guy is just Mr. Beast. Yeah, it's just it's it's insane. Like it's just wild. Well, it's he had wild. one goal. His only goal was to get as many views as possible. So yeah. that's your only goal. Like he didn't he back in the day just say Logan Paul a million times. That was yeah. like one of his yeah, first was, videos. His first viral video. Wow. He just said Logan Paul, Logan Paul, Logan Paul, Logan Paul for like uh, a million times. Like that. That was first video I ever saw. That like I was on like Facebook and it was him just doing like he bought like a hundred thousand dollars worth of scratch offs and yeah. I watched that whole video because I was like, oh, what's he gonna win? I'm just so yeah. curious. Title yeah. and thumbnail. That's it. Didn't he do a video once where he was like, "Hey, this is Mr. Be uh, this is Mr. Beast. A year uh, from today, blah blah blah. I have this many subscribers." And then like a year later, yep. He had like two million. Like, what, yeah. wasn't it like a crazy? Yeah, he. I think he was hoping video. to have like a hundred thousand, and he had like ten million. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. insane. I took how? how he's he's just a genius. I just it's 
I go would never want to be him. It's all like the, even the videos he makes where you're having all of these people compete for money. I can't be around that type of energy of all these people. It's a little dystopian. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, like when he cures blind people, like that's cool, but it's more the system that allows people to need to be in a video like that is uncomfortable. I think he yeah. un he obviously understands that people like to watch that shit, right? Yeah. Like, just look at TV. He didn't just come up with that idea. No, like, yeah. He sees what's popular on, re on television and then he just takes that and then runs with it. Yeah. I think people, I think we just see it because YouTube is more like realistic. So yeah. we just see it as like, oh, that's weird. But you go to Fear Factor, they're eating bucks for fucking uh, yeah. $100,000. Yeah, true. Yeah. I think his rewards are much better. Yeah. I agree. I'd rather be on a Mr. V's video than any uh any <laughs> fear factor on. yeah yeah absolutely american ninja warrior as a youtuber and then agreed so mr beast is actually also just donating a shit ton of money to yeah you. if i and correct me if i'm wrong no i, I think, think he's he does. donating a lot of the money he makes not a lot sorry or he like invests it into the reward of what these people are exactly competing exactly. for and, so, and i mean like, people used to watch like jerry springer and you don't win any money on that you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly like let's just have people who are you know <laughs> Terrible lives fighting each other. Yeah. On TV. I feel like though his videos now have like shaken the ground up for what a prize really is. Like, what yeah. are we competing for? It's not just like, oh, you're gonna win twenty thousand dollars on Wheel of Fortune today. Like, let's amp up <laughs> what the prize is. I, I don't like talking about brand deals, but let me work brand deals into this. It's so funny that like Mr. Beast has come up with this whole like world of like prizes because a brand would come to uh, like will come to us and go, hey, we want to do a giveaway. We're gonna give away like these balloons are the and i'm just like baby we are in 2023 yeah. <laughs> no one wants to do anything yeah anything without winning some cash money or a cool fucking prize car money house it has yeah. to be like or a lifetime supply, supply of something oh. i've always wanted to win a lifetime su a, a lifetime supply of something like people with lifetime supply of chipotle i'm like that's amazing yeah. that you can always go and eat like your food it's guaranteed every yeah, day. Yeah, like you exactly. get it for free, and oh, I just would love a lifetime supply of something. Yeah, I like, but it's just funny that that's what like a prize should just. That's what prizes should be. It yes. should not yes. make people feel like they're walking off like embarrassed and and just not worth it. You don't want to win a PR package, exactly. Like, oh, well, that's, we'll that's, get you ready for Coachella weekend one. Yeah. Here's a box. Come on, yeah, come I'm on. with you. Do you know anybody who's ever won a big giveaway? Yeah, you won The Price is Right or whatever that show was. Yeah, well, uh, let's make a deal. Let's yeah. make a deal. For it though, it wasn't a it. but it wasn't a giveaway. Oh, it wasn't any like true strategy in it. I just got very lucky. My mom in like the eighties won a refrigerator. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was like my family refrigerator. She won it at like a. She like mailed in on the radio. Only thing she's ever won in her life, and like that was our home refrigerator. I, now you see, I would never trust those radio. Like yeah, I can't believe even at the mall where there's like the car and you got to fill it out. I'm oh, like, this no. is just just a they want your info? junk, uh, just junk mail. <laughs> yeah, it's become that's, a, that's what it's yeah. junk mail. It's it, in real life junk mail. Remember the little uh, thing you sign up for your kid to be in a fashion show at the mall? Oh <laughs> boy! Oh, you had kids who would come back to school like the next day. And they're like, I'm gonna be on Disney Channel. <laughs> <laughs> and you better watch that. Uh huh. Sure. Those fashion, those fashion shows of the ball though were the funniest things to walk by because i like i've never felt on like go, but like there would be times you go to the you mall see it's just one happening in the moment you're just looking at it you're just like this is what people i wore these fucking the creeps time. like and in the mall like looking at 12 year olds like hey you look like a model you want to come and sign up yeah it's a, that's a little a little weird who's uh, who's taking that job to scout 12 year olds but then who, but who's gonna take that job other 12 year olds like you got I don't, an adult it, it's that. just a weird that whole I thing know, is so is weird. weird do you think you could be a good talent scout not for children but if you had to scout out people for something what would you like to scout them out for uh i don't know because that's like the talent is one thing but also you just gotta see if these people are crazy people that just want the attention and just want and, and then they get to set that, like wants that attention. Yes, that's, that's, that's what you're that's selling. Exactly. Like we're seeing auditions for like just like like little kids that like get these big roles. You could really you see in the auditions like yeah. oh wow they are meant to be a star. These like some of these little kids. I would love to get a reality TV audition. Like people who want to be on Big Brother, and you're like you're a psycho. Oh, I, would uh, I would love to do that audition process for like reality. TV. Like you are messy. Let's yeah. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's bring them in. You yeah. The crazier the better. Yeah. But yes, like, yes. It's, it's, you have to fill up all these all these gaps, right? Like yeah. I get the real the real sweetheart that doesn't uh -huh. like, cause any drama, but you also have to get the fucking asshole yep. that's going to ruin everybody's lives. And then, <laughs> but so you like. 
if you are a big asshole and you do ruin people's lives in real life, in your life, get on reality yes. TV because yes. everyone probably hates you. And you'll get paid. You might as well get paid for it. <laughs> but if you can't change yourself and yeah. you just can't help but be like this asshole, just get just on sign the them world. up. Come yeah. on, big brother, we need you. Because you will find other people just like you mm -hmm. that you can become really good friends with. Yeah, I, I think I could do that. That'd be fun. What? Like, oh, uh, like looking, at, looking yeah. at the audition tapes of those who want to be on. Like, if you want to be on The Bachelor, you're a psycho. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're desperate for attention. It's insane. There's, there's no, like, there, there's, there's not one person on there that, like, is, is just normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're all competing to be influencers. None of them, like, ever maintain the careers yeah. that they... Uh, come in on ass like oh i'm a nurse like blah blah yeah, blah, blah. Like, good, good, yeah you're yeah. gonna be going back to the emergency room <laughs> helping out after you get down to the Honestly, final four the first maybe first second maybe third season of the bachelor yes genuinely i think these were normal people that yep. really wanted to find love and they're having a hard time yeah after that it's all clout all clout social social media they want trying to grow their instagram and i get it i get it i would do the same thing if that was my world and i watch reality tv all the time and i want to get famous that's probably what i would do too it's get so, on the bouch it's so funny the reality show people out here in la when they're having their first year post show they're like everything's just so new to, new to them but they think they're fucking god <laughs> Like, and then two or three years later, you're running in and they're suddenly so nice. Like, they, 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 they suddenly want to be like, I should be on your pod. We should, we should do something. Time, it's on the first year. It's like they come in like they're the fucking president at parties. <laughs> like, oh, don't go up and talk to them. They're just like, who are you? Like, oh my God. And, and then years later, suddenly they're just so warm and friendly. I mean, we've been doing this for about like eight years. We've been doing it about that. We've been doing this for <laughs> <laughs> we've been doing this for like eight years, and I feel like we've seen so many people come and go with like how they act, and then they yes. act completely different. But we've just seen so many people do that. Uh, let's name some names. Who are some of these people that you guys have noticed had a big ego and then calm down? Uh, Someone <laughs> listen. I, I don't. I don't give names. But out. I would say everyone that we do know is actually pretty decent, like yeah. people, except for. <laughs> no yeah i have those you know i don't i don't kiss and so even back in like when i lived in new york there was you know obviously casey nice that was like the big vlogger but there was other people in new york at the time and they were making content too and you go to like these you never went to like buffer festival no it, you I, I, I feel like i've heard of it it's like an old they used to be like a youtube festival and i went one year like 2016 and there was like people there they thought they were such hot shit because they had a youtube channel next year Oh my god, it's so good to see you. Yeah. Oh, it's so your movie. You're in LA now. It's pretty great. And I'm like, I was like, you didn't say hi to me. I tried to introduce myself <laughs> a year ago, and now you know my name. All of a sudden, I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's, what goes you on. You just got to be nice. Just yeah. be a nice person, no matter what. Like People were, will remember that, especially like first uh, impressions. It's so important. Yeah. Especially how you're so important. Yeah. I, I always try to be the first. I, every time I meet somebody new, I always try to be nice. Yeah. Then the second, third time, then you can be an asshole. But <laughs> you got to be nice the first time. You have to. Uh, would you ever do stand up comedian? No. Stand up comedy? Absolutely no. not. I you don't think you could do it? Up. I don't really, I don't <laughs> think, like, that's like a nightmare to me. I really? Nightmare. Yeah, dude. I, I, I did he not see me at the roast? I just have like a crazy stage fright. I guess stage I fright. Yeah, it. and it's just knowing that like the, it happens so late in the day where it's like, oh, I have to go then do that. Yeah, like people, it just these impending like oh, or taking the time out of the day to come like drive to you yeah. to get to see you now make me laugh. It's like that's a lot of. But you're funny. Like that's what you do. You're a funny guy. But, but you have to like have, have to st you have to be up there and you have to come up with like a um, set, yeah, punchline, 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 and know how the crowd is gonna react. Like you have so much crowd work and skill of like reading a room, and that takes so much time to build up that skill. Bro, dude, I probably get one good punchline every three days. Like <laughs> for me to sit there and do a punchline every. 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, but if you no wrote way. if you wrote those down every three days after two months, you got ten minutes. Yeah, but the punchline is not gonna make a room full of adults. Like yeah. full of adults that don't really care for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just like I'm, we were talking about this. Like I went to my friend, he did like a backyard comedy show. Yeah. And it was like good comedians, but like not the greatest in the world. They're like up and coming comedians. And I'm just like, I I, I could do that. You want to? I think I, I think I would need to figure out how to write a set, and I would probably like work with like you or Jason and write a set. 
because that's the hardest thing I think is writing jokes. Yes, I can get up on stage and fucking oh, be funny. Not only that, you also have to memorize it. You got to memorize. <laughs> no, no, when you're when you're coming up though, you get like a little piece of paper. You're like, oh yeah, Toyota Camry. Yeah, but like it doesn't look good though when you're reading. It, uh, yeah, and once you already know how a joke goes and it's already like there in your head, there's something about it though. Like my brain. It's just not as good as like the first time I said it. Yeah. And I think that spark now said that joke like 10 times. I like don't even find it funny anymore because to me. when I like when I read for the rose when I read my set like when I was doing it in the living room and I was comfortable yeah I was killing it yeah but then as soon as I got up on that stage your joke it just doesn't sound the same anymore it just mm-hmm. like you have to say it perfectly yes in order for the joke to yeah happen. one syllable if you st- stumble the whole yeah. thing is not funny anymore oh, stumble anywhere that's it yeah your whole you might as well pack up shop and then and then restart <laughs> and, and you just see someone in the crowd go. <laughs> like, oh my God. like, or someone just making eye contact with someone who does not find you funny, and they're just like, "Dude, Heath and I were doing like a Q and A at a college, right?" And we didn't realize that they mi- mixed up people. There was people there waiting for the next act. Oh, and they were within the people that came to our Q and A. I have no idea who you were. Oh. Half the people had no idea who we were, so we we're just like. Trying to be funny, answering questions, answering shit that nobody would like understand yeah. if they didn't know us, and just looking around, they're just like, mm. uh, oh, I think uh, that stuff stays uh, with me. Like going to bed, <laughs> like I will lose sleep. But you have to have that tough of a skin yeah. as a comedian to be like, I don't care. On to the next just thing. Not give a but, shit. Oh, I would still just cringe the next day thinking about it. So you don't see comedians like if you go to stand up and you're just like, I could do that. You don't no, think that I, you're I see comedians as wow, like they truly have a talent and they have mm. the balls to go up there and the good the, ones. I gotta go see the, professional the comedians. Ones, yeah. it, it, it sucks because we have friends out here and they're doing stand up. Props to them. Go out, do it, do it as many times as you can. But if you invite me, I might not show up because it's not you. you it's also watch watching it. other amateur comedians get up and do stand up. I cringe. I and what's sad is like you remember all the bad ones. This camera just went out. No. No, I think it's no. the other one. Like you remember all the bad ones more than you do the good yes. ones. Yes. Like it I stays with you. I've seen some people out in LA bomb bad. Like, oh, were you there that one night? Did you go see Hannah Pilkis did stand up and she was great. Yeah. But there was another guy who was like a drunk and his like all of his friends oh, were there. No, no, no. I, Buddy, I'll the, never forget that. Because you also you like cringe on their behalf. Like I've yeah, I've seen that, and like you start sweating because you're like, oh, well, what's gonna happen? You just, you just want them to do good. Yes, yes. Every yes. person you see that's not a, like that great, you want them to be amazing. Yeah, like you want that for them. It's like, not that's, fun to watch them. Exactly, bomb. it's not fun at all. But you know, there's some people that love watching people bomb. I know. I think there's real comedians yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, they get it. off on that, which is a crazy. Can it just be like you're finally getting good as a comedian, and then you're there at the comedy store, and then just like Dave Chappelle just like walks in to watch you oh. like that type of pressure <laughs> i would just like but then some people i just feel like just get very excited they're like oh my god i mean fuck yeah let's let's do this like th- to me like that's a true comedian that's a true stand-up yeah um and but yeah watching really good, good ones oh my god it's it's so fun watching the good one uh, is the best yeah we watched uh john mulaney no we watched uh a little controversial by louis ck oh so Amazing! We oh were at the God, we were at so the taping, good. right? What? Weren't you there when we went to see that? That was the show that we went to. Yes, yes. The, the, yeah, the, the, uh, dude, the the people you had before. Oh, the openers! Oh my God, just so good! I just yeah. like I'm just so jealous that they had that much just Confidence. going on. Yeah, in their in their body and in their mind and in their self worth. Yeah, like they could just entertain. Yeah, I don't think if I like I don't go to see Louis C.K. and I'm like I can do that. That no, is like it, you're seeing the master. Yeah, but you go to like a backyard comedy show and it's like yeah, he's like kind of funny. I'm like. We're all funnier than this guy. Yeah, but he has the balls to go up there and tell and, and that it. takes like half the that's a, that's a half the skill. Yeah, it's getting up there and actually doing. And it. it's wild like you have to perfect like five minutes, a ten minute set, fifteen minute yep. set, yep. doing a whole hour <laughs> of just talking. Yeah. Nah, that's a movie. That's yeah, so, like that. You are. Yeah, that's impossible. That's re- that's I'm saying really tough. But I think like you could do ten minutes. Ah, uh, maybe I. Could. How many jokes? Is I would. T- I would be more Depends. of a storytelling comedian, though. If I was a comedian, I would be too. I'd be a. I, I would want to do a storytelling one. It's right. like about the punchline. It's just like the delivery and the moment and the thrill of what you're talking about. Yeah. That is like funny. The story itself is funny. I yeah. guess it's packed with punchlines, 
but I have to focus on like a story. I can't do just these one liners. But, but when you bomb on a storyline joke, and people are like, uh, no, yeah, it's even worse. It's because when you do those like quick jokes and nobody laughs, fine, move on to the next it, one. Move on to the next one, and you didn't build it up. But I've heard, <laughs> I've I've heard good like five minute build up like storylines, and just. And the last line is like, and there the, were butterflies. The crowd goes silent. And silent. it was just like, where's, where's the button? Yeah, just like, oh, yeah. And he knows he's been practicing, practicing that for probably the last like three months. It's painful. <laughs> it's the worst also when you, as I already just have so much fear when I'm telling a story, like in halfway through the story, you're like, is this even good? <laughs> even, on the, even on the podcast, there's times where I'm just like, I don't even know if I want to say this. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, we have the we can edit. We have the the option of cut it, which is nice. You know, all the time we'll say something and we're just like, cut it. Like, yeah, yeah, it's funny. Cut it. But yeah, okay. So no stand up for the for the gang here. No. Absolutely not. But I could see us doing. I think we truly could do a good show like on stage of us just casually talking and if we had the stories like planned out of what we wanted to yeah. i could like i want see it i think we just need certain good bullet points yes that's yes. all we need i think that's what's important we it doesn't need to be like we need to say this then this and this and right this. as long as we have like good five bullets of what we need to hit we're really good for working off of that but on every life if we were if we did a lot like a live tour for unfiltered the first 15 minutes of every single one is going to be just very tough for me yeah mm. it's, it's getting it's getting past that once you're past that and you feel the energy in the room yeah people are a lot like that's when like it gets very very easy for me i'm like because when you're comfortable then you, you're able to like make better jokes you're able to like are uh, feeding off the energy rather exactly. than like being repelled but by i that. just want people minutes. to get their money's worth yeah because they made yeah. their whole day about coming to this they exactly. instead of chilling right off of work and not doing anything they paid they got on the train they got in the uber yeah. to come to this exactly. and like i just want them to get their money's worth and that's just the big imposter know, syndrome the people are pre-gaming yeah they are pre-gaming before they, they're like we got a pre-game because we're gonna have some fun at this so yeah and imagine just them walking out and i feel like that's good that would be a reflection on the show too because yeah. if i saw if i met somebody that i loved and the meeting was just not that great yeah. i don't know if i could go back and just like watch your stuff again like i would yeah. just remember that for a really long time mm -hmm. so that's something else that I'd really like worry about. Just like, would they want to come back to watch the podcast? Yeah. If the live show was not good. Yeah. I don't know. I also that's feel scary. Like, yeah. Also, it may maintain also a good sense of sobriety when you have to go perform and be your funniest self, like your loosey goosey self, just knowing that like a lot of comedians just don't drink at all. Oh yeah. And you're just come like and that. And that's like, your fear that you're dealing with. And your funniest self was when you've had a few beers with friends I and stuff. To, yeah. Oh we'll yeah. That. But then you're doing that all night. You're just yeah. like become a drunk. Exactly. And then when you're not drinking anymore, you start getting tired. You start like, I know like if I like, if I have a couple drinks and then I stop drinking, I'm just, Oh yeah. I'm I feel tired. it. Yeah. I'm tired and I get anxious. I'm like, I just want to sleep. It's just pick your poison, mm. pick your poison. Hmm. Or take some shrooms. Do you think shrooms would help? Oh yeah, that's what you so, want to yeah. do. Take some mushrooms before you. A bright light shines <laughs> on you, and there's a room full of strangers looking at you. I think a good I little think, microdose. I think a good little microdose would help me. Absolutely not. I think it would help me. Did you ever have to do like big presentations, like in high school or anything? Did that like scare you in front of a class? Yeah, you know we all had to do that though, but never like a college too. Were you funny but though when you were doing your presentations, or you took it seriously? No. Oh, really? No. I, the thing is, I wasn't like, I'm again, I'm not like a good present. Yeah. Pres like a performer like performer, like, yeah. especially like in a live crowd like that. To me, that's a live crowd. But, yeah. Like maybe if I was like on a zoom call, I could probably be a little funny. You know, like <laughs> from the zoom presentation with the class, I could maybe like, yeah. I think it's like seeing everybody looking at you like mm -hmm. that's to me, that's like fucking yeah. hell nightmare. Yeah. All right. Or like to me, acting, same thing, acting. If there's a big giant crew in front of me and I have to act, I'm going to be horrible. But if like you put a camera on me and there's only like two people mm -hmm. there, like a camera guy and like Matt, if we have a fellow, I could be a pretty good actor. Yeah. Yeah. When there's not a lot of people that I feel like I'm performing for. I'm always jealous of actors how like much time they have to really prep for their role. Like they get they get books on the project. Now you have four or five months to get in the best shape of your life. Sit down with your lines every day, rehearse, and then you by the moment you show up, it's perfect. Every little acting project or sketch thing, it's always like we're doing it within 24 hours. Yeah. We're just looking at scripts, saying shit. But to then they're, they're not getting. 
top A list acting. Yeah, yeah, I know. And but... So it's like, but I still think those actors are. Good, but it's still a really hard job. You're you're memorizing a whole fucking movie. Okay? Yeah, and you want to be very simple on set because I feel like. Just like A-list actors, just like influencers, if you're hard to work with, if you don't remember your lines, if you're just like, you're not making anybody's life easier, why would you? Why would they want you in the next movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to just find the ne- another Brad Pitt. Yeah, like, the guy who's easy to work there's, with. There's, many. There's 20. There's 20 to 40 A-list actors that you can easily get that's going to be better than the next person. And it's Each wild as an actor, you never knew, know what cut they're gonna take too exactly. of you like your worst take could actually be what oh, they include why, why do people always take my worst acting takes do but they? i never felt for anybody we'll film it like five se- five times and i know they got the worst one because like <laughs> i know like i'll act it out i'm just like all right that was my worst one thank god we're doing four more yeah and they all use the worst one and i and sometimes i feel like they're just they're trying to they're trying to um sabotage you? sabotage <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no because there's no, no. no way i was like let me see the other ones i'll see the others like that one's so much better and they're just like we really like this one i'm like you must like bad out of because that was the worst scene i've ever done yeah you gotta look out for yourself that's why it's good to control your own that's why youtube yeah. is is the is the the way to dustin do hoffman was notorious though for like driving directors crazy where he'd be like i need to come to the editing room and like sit there and go through all this takes I, and being like nope this one this one not that one and I they'd be like yo that. dude it's just a scene you did great in all of them but yeah. he took his craft so seriously and just to the point where you get a little neurotic about it yeah that's you i respect that the dustin yeah, hoffman absolutely no you want you want your best self out there that you want yeah. to make sure that it's the best mm. i get i respect that but if a room full of people say one scene is better than another, and I think the other one is better, you gotta listen to the room full of people. You like editing yourself though. Like I you, you it, yeah. can look at a lot of clips of yourself and be like, which is the one? I'm very like, I don't. If I know there's six more of me doing this, yeah. I don't want to look at it. But I get. But I'm really good at looking at other people's like. Yes. Yeah. Like if I am how to edit like a skit. I'd be really good at grabbing exactly what's the best scene and what's the best acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm. I'm not good. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good actor. I feel like we have, we're in stuff to like it. Like Im- imagine we were all amazing act, amazing actors, right? I feel like the the um the potential for us is just never end. Like we, we, I feel like we could easily get shit. But it's so strange because we're really good. Our identities online are so bound to like our true self. It's weird us playing people who aren't ourselves. It's just it, you think people, you think you think uh, you think uh, producers or uh, directors, you think they would, if they saw too much of your true self online, they wouldn't want you acting in. I do think that that's why, like, actors sometimes, like, back in the 90s and stuff, like Johnny Depp or whatever, wants to go on this. Yeah, they, they come in, like, they're really cool, and they're just, like, kind of quiet. And, yeah. They, and then they can go and act, because you're like, okay, well, this this guy's really good at acting. But they if they know, this. yeah, if they know that you're just, like, this silly, goofy guy, and then you're, like, playing, you know, Ryan Gosling in The Notebook, but it's, like, Zayn Hijazi, they're like, yeah. come on. Back then, I think, I, I feel like that would have been more weird, but today, I think it's so acceptable. People love seeing personalities, especially in, like, actors. Yeah. If you see, like, personalities, like, dude, fuck, what's that guy from, Stra- uh, not Stranger Things, uh, one of, like, in Riverdale or something, Riverdale? Yeah. There's a video of him, like, playing with his baby and just, like, being all weird, and people love to yeah. that shit on Yeah. Uh, they don't see that. They never see the outside of, like... It's a good, yeah, it's a good position to be in. If I were an actor, though, I don't think I would like to play, like, too much characters. I would just like to be, like, a oh. Jason Bateman, where you're just kind of the same thing in every It makes your life easier. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. able to put back to your, that, that, like, act, like, that type of acting. Yeah. yeah. There's so many actors like that who, like, play, kind of play the same thing. Like, or, like yeah. Stiller's always playing uh, bit Yeah. Stiller. It's, yeah, they have... Yeah, I think they're just like kind of being themselves at yeah. the end of the day. I, yeah. I think they're they're be- themselves are the best. Yeah, there's characters. a lot of actors that like that's not the character you're yeah. watching. The, like Will Smith is Will Smith in every movie. Exactly, and usually I feel like comedian like people in the comedy space they yes. stick to yes their own like the, yeah. they stick to one character. But like really like you know like Le- Robbie's yes. like obviously they're not like comedians, but they, they can fucking switch up at any point. Yeah. There's like, yeah. Well, Zane, thank you so much for having us on. Zane Hijazi, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, co-host, and roommate. Love you, buddy. Thank Arigato you. gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu.